It is a unique economic transformation from Celtic tiger to lame duck. And for Ireland, the pain is far from over. This year, the country's budget deficit will be equivalent to almost a third of national economic output. The Dublin government is struggling to convince the money markets and the EU that it can avoid financial collapse. My guest today is Ireland's Energy and Communications Minister, Eamon Ryan. What will it take to save the Irish economy? Eamon Ryan in Dublin, welcome to Hard Talk. Good afternoon. Thank you, Stephen. What is it like sitting in a cabinet that is wrestling with arguably the worst budget deficit in the industrialised world? It's difficult, but I have a strong sense that we can do it and that our job in government and in politics is to get the country through it and get on with it. And we've been dealing with them, I suppose, it, this broke two years ago with the, the international banking crisis and we had our own very domestic version of that, which we've had to deal with. We've done what we would said we'd do at each stage along the way here. We've got further work to do, but it is doable. This country will get out of this economic difficulty. It's a fundamentally strong country. It's a fundamentally strong uh, political system. And you work within it then to get the country through it and, and do what we have to do. Well, we'll work through those concepts of both Ireland being fundamentally strong and fundamentally fair. Let's start with the strength bit of it. How can you tell me the country is strong when, as I just alluded to in the opening, your budget deficit for this year does represent pretty much one-third of GDP, national income? That is extraordinary. It's unheard of. It is, but that's coming from the property bubble. We had a common regard and very bad, very da damaging property bubble. Uh, but that very high uh, cost this year, a very high government GDP debt ratio, is because of the consequences of that. But that's a one-off. I mean, that's something we do have to learn from. We have to make sure it doesn't happen again in terms of such a property bubble. But the underlying strength of the economy is shown, I believe, from the fact that we're actually going into a balance of payments surplus. There's actually more money, even with all the debt payments we have, both in the private and the government sector, there's, we're actually coming into a cash positive position for the whole country. Yeah, but I can't, I can't, OK, but I can't let you sl slide over the very real fact that bailing out the banks, nationalising all of that bad debt, has brought the economy to its knees. I just wonder whether the 50 billion euros or so that the government has had to take on in terms of these toxic debts, whether that does not stick in your throat. Of course it does. I mean, it's a sickness. You wouldn't want to do it. But ultimately, the job in government uh, and in the country is to actually manage that. There was a legacy from a property bubble that built up over five or ten years that did us no good. I mean, it was actually socially damaging as well as anything else. And one of the benefits coming from, or one of the outcomes we have, is at least now we've got a property market that is saner, that makes it easier for people to actually get rental, get, get a property. Yes, there's a huge legacy issue in the banking and so on, but we can manage that. Well, you don't, you don't actually know, though, do you? Because you don't really know the final extent of, of the horror that is going to come with taking on all of this bad debt from Anglo-Irish and all the other banks. I, I disagree. We do know. One of the reasons we do, I suppose, is we adopted a mechanism which was honest and which was difficult, but which did get to the real facts in terms of what the extent of the losses were. We went into our banks with an independent agency and went through loan by loan, property by, by property, and tried to get a real sense as what was the real value of those loans. Now, we've discounted them down very hard. We've cut more than 50% off what we see as the real value of those loans. That left a difficulty in our banks in that they, were, you know, they needed further capital. But one of the benefits from it is, by being such a thorough, honest, hard, rigorous process, is we now know the scale of the problem. And I believe, as the, uh, as the, head of our, the new head of our central bank, says, as hard as that legacy is, it's one we can't manage. Nouriel Roubini, one of the leading economists uh, on Wall Street, who's become known as, as one of the gurus of, of economics over the period of, of financial meltdown, he looks at the Irish and indeed Portuguese, Greek and other weaker economies in Europe and he says it's by no means clear that you're out of the woods and he says that debt restructuring may well be necessary, which in essence means you'd have to go cap in hand either to the European Union or the IMF and ask for a bailout. Is that going to happen? 
I don't think it will. And I think uh, I, I've read Mr Rubini over the last two or three years and I think his analysis has been proven to be true. But I believe Ireland actually won't have to avail of such facilities. We will be able to get out of it. And um, that for, for, for a number of different reasons. Um, firstly, we started from a very low debt position that we actually, we, because we had a very successful economy for 10 years, hampered by the property bubble, but the underlying economy grew quite significantly, we went into this crisis with a very low level of, uh, of uh, government debt. We also had a very high level of cash. We put aside about 25 billion euros into a pension reserve fund for, for a, a rainy day, which again, it maybe doesn't show up in some of the international analysis. Sure, but the, the, this, isn't, this isn't just a rainy day. This is, this is a perfect storm. And, and I appreciate your confidence and I sense it in your body language. But then I, I juxtapose that with the facts that the government, your government that you sit in, uh, said, said to the Irish people that, you know, next, this coming budget we're going to have to save €3 billion, Euros, uh, either by raising taxes or by cutting spending, even though we've cut it a lot already. It now turns out that €3 billion Euros isn't going to get anywhere close. The government's message in the last couple of days is it'll be about €5 billion. Euros. So your message keeps shifting. Well, for, just to look back, those facts I was mentioning are real. That 25 billion in the pension reserve fund is real money. And I said, I, I mentioned that because it is an important element in terms of asking the question, can we manage the hit that we had in the banks, which was horrible, but which I believe we can manage. In terms of the, a larger cut in next year's budget, we'll have to wait and see what the actual figure it is. It isn't set. But it's true. Some of the projections we had for growth next year have been scaled downwards. And in scaling that down, that then puts a higher need on you to raise or, or to make further cuts or to raise further taxes. Now, we will do that. One of the strengths, as I said, of the Irish political system is our main political parties have come together and each collectively said, yes, we're going to achieve that 3% target by, by, uh, by uh, 2014. And that's that, that is, let's be clear about this, that is the target set by the EU Commission. Uh, they have certain rules that govern the Eurozone and they have reminded Ireland that you must get down to that 3% uh, deficit as a proportion of GDP by 2014. But you know as well as I do there are serious economists in Ireland and there are some politicians who've broken with what you call a consensus and say that, given where Ireland is today, is simply crazy. Well, you'll always get different views. I mean, economics is a, is a science where you're always going to get different views as to what is possible. But what I'm saying is the political system, which will have to make the call on what we do in our budgets, has collectively, in terms of any makeup of the future government as well as this existing government, going to meet that target, going to get our budget figures down. And that gives me real strength and confidence, yes, that we can do this and we will do it. it and as I said, It's a shame the credit rating agencies don't have the same confidence. Moody's just the other day said that it is contemplating cutting your debt rating again. And of course, every time they do that, it gets more expensive to Ireland, for Ireland to borrow money and the problem you've got gets ever greater. Yeah, no, I think, listen, we've been caught, as you say, in a perfect storm. We were coming out of this quite well in the earlier part of this year in terms of we were starting to see very strong export growth, starting to see spending coming back. That wasn't helped over the summer with the wider concern about European debt, debt issues. And indeed, yes, our banking system, the problem we had were the, the figures when we went in and we went in and looked at every loan were worse than we'd originally hoped. But we were at least honest in that and were open with that and actually set out what the figures were. We've only closed that book about a week ago now. And I think it's not surprising that uncertainty and given the wider in, in, uh, environment that people were asking questions. But I believe what they'll see, firstly in what we've done in the banking system, system, but also what we will commit to and start doing and, and keep doing in the budgetary side is a certain degree of certainty. And with that, you'll see our debt spreads coming down again and us managing our way through it. And ultimately, I think what the markets are looking for, trying to get a sense of us, does this political system have the ability to, to uh, do that? And even in the Dáil in the last week in, in our national parliament, that increased sense of, yeah, we're going to do it because it's in the national interest, it's in our country's interest to manage this ourselves. We will do that. Uh, and our economy is actually, as I said, starting to turn anyway in well, terms of we're starting to have a balance of payment surplus that helps us get there. Yeah, you say on your blog, Mr Ryan, you say, I will do whatever I can to make sure our recovery plans are fair. Let's think about mm. that word fair. I mean, what we've seen in your government's various uh, emergency 
budget packages already are public sector pay cuts of up to 15 percent we've seen child benefits slashed we've seen unemployment benefits slashed we've seen unemployment already rise to well over 13 percent you're now talking about another huge swathe of public spending cuts that is the public the irish people are bearing the brunt of all of this and is that fair given who caused the crisis i'm thinking of the bankers and the property developers Oh, listen, we'd all love to see the bankers paying for it all in their, in their own way, but that's not a realistic uh, solution. Yes, we have had and we will have further changes in our banking system and uh, that's so, so the people see that bankers don't just get away with it, having some, some of the mistakes they've made. But one of the things we've done in government in the last two years in response to the crisis is we did change, we changed our tax system, first of all, to raise further revenues, particularly from those who are better off. Our independent economic research agency said that there was more done in the last two years in terms of progressive taxation change than, than had been done in the previous 20. So our actual first response was to try and do this in a fair way. But we need well, to do more. Well, hang on. I, I want to stick with this idea of fairness. Uh, for example, you know, some of the biggest businessmen in Ireland, the property developers, the guys who were at the heart of the problem that brought down your economy. I'm thinking, for example, of Sean Quinn. He's believed to owe, have debts of something to the tune of 2.8 billion. As I understand it, Anglo-Irish Bank, which of course now is completely nationalised, owned by the government, has written off 2.3 billion euros of Sean Quinn's debt. And you're telling me that the way you're handling this is entirely fair. No, listen, our banks are going to pursue people who owe money such as that to, to the maximum extent possible. Uh, and no person will get any special treatment or will be left out. So, so we have well, to Well, I've been watching what's been happening debts. in terms of not just Sean Quinn, but a whole host of property developers, businessmen, and the guys who ran the banks. I've been looking. I've been trying to find any sense that they've been punished, that any of them have actually really suffered, that they're no longer the rich men they used to be. I find no evidence of that at all. Well, one of the first one of the strengths of our country is we have a proper constitutional legal system as well as a strong political system. And there's a separation there that's valid and right. And yes, the, the courts and the legal system takes its course of actions in terms of if someone's done something wrong or someone is pursued in terms of debts, uh, debts they owe. That's not the job of the political system, but our judicial system will do that and won't treat anyone more favourably than, than, than anyone else. But the, the broader response and the difficulty, the fundamental difficulty we had as well as those banks banking issues, is that our construction industry built up, it was too large. And as that fell away because of this property bubble bursting, we had, to, we, we had a structural gap. Now, how we address that is what we need to get right and make sure it's fair. And what I was saying to you there is the nature of the tax changes that we, we have put in, where we did tax those with wealthier income first as a first response. Secondly, in terms of the major responses we did, yes, we brought down public sector pay, an average, as you say, of about 14%. But that, in my mind, was the right thing to do because we needed to get our spending back in line yeah, with but, what we could afford. Yeah, but let's level, uh, well, I would like you to level with the Irish people now. You've said that what you've done so far is nowhere near enough. In fact, the, the amount you need to cut now is going up, not down. So be level with the Irish people and tell them how it's going to hit them in the future in terms of income tax, in terms of slashing services and public sector pay even more. How far do you go? Well, that's something we have to decide in the next two weeks, and that's not final as yet. We said we'd get to the Commission by earlier, middle, middle November. A four-year plan will set out some of those figures. So the political system in Ireland is actually coming together, sharing views on that, and that will be set out in a plan which, which, which goes to Brussels. And yes, there will be. I mean, we have a further adjustments to make, both in raising tax and in cutting spending. But um, we, that ultimately is in our interest to do as fairly and as effective as we can to make sure that our debt costs, as you say, come, come down and that we can actually manage our affairs in, in, in an orderly fashion. As an, and as an independent sovereign state, which actually has a long record in running, one of the oldest it's democracies in, in Europe, we're well able to, to uh, do that. Uh, Mr. Rannis